Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. In today's episode, won't listen to my warnings. You're the boss. Tell me not to come in if I don't comply. Okay deal. Rude lady caused her whole store to no longer get free tea. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe so that you will never miss a video. Let's get started. Won't listen to my warnings. You're the boss. So this was years and years ago, back when I was working as a land surveyor. Basically what we would do is go out with a laser gun on a tripod and shoot it at a bunch of mirrors on a stick, and because math, that would give us an extremely precise map of an area. My dad was the one who trained me in the trade and because I have a very analytical mind, and this is basically geometry. The job, I had a talent for it. Though honestly I wasn't all that fond of the job. Good at it, sure, just not fond. So one day, with my dad's help, I get put on a survey team with a guy we'll be calling Jay. He was technically the crew chief which meant he was technically in charge. Jay was a dyed-in-the-wool redneck. He listened to conservative radio, thus forcing me to do the same. Drove a beat-up old pickup truck, lived in an apartment complex that somehow had a rusted-out car sitting in its front lawn, and had a stubborn streak Texas tall and fueled by his utter surety that he knew better than every damn person else. I never heard him say anything to confirm it but if I had seen a confederate flag on his truck, it would not have been out of place. Jay didn't like me. I loathed him. We would often meet up at 6am or even earlier to get equipment loaded and set out on a job. I'm not a morning person. I'm definitely a night owl. And while I'm always awake, alert, and on the ball while on sight, the car ride out to the site would often lull me to sleep. Jay Ducking hated that. Every time I would, fighting to keep my eyes open while ignoring the constant drone of southern fried conservatism flooding out of the radio, start to doze off slightly, Jay started screaming his damn head off, telling me to wake the duck up. If he had to be awake, I was sure as hell going to be awake too. Ten minutes of him ranting and he'd finally shut up, only to start over again when my head drooped an hour later. This is an example of Jay's attitude toward pretty much everything. He was right. I was wrong. Suggest differently and he'd hem and haw until you just gave up. So on to the MC of this story. We were out on a massive job. We had to survey an entire strip mall complex. One of those deals that takes up an entire block to itself with lots of little alcoves and corners that made sight lines difficult. Lots of setting up, shooting a few points, setting a traverse point, then breaking it all down again to move to the next point. We knew already we were going to be at it all damn day. So we broke everything out and got to work. So as the crew chief, one of Jay's responsibilities was that he would plan our traverses. He would choose the vantage point he thought we could get the most relevant data recorded from, set the traverse, let me shoot it in, and then we would switch positions. I'd set up the instrument and data collector on the traverse. He would get a backsight from our old setup location so the instrument could orient itself and knew what direction it was facing. And then he would go around with the prism and I'd take the readings. About halfway through this massive job, I've just broken down the instrument, and I'm heading to my next traverse when Jay stops me. Jay, hey, you forgot to shoot in that archway. I should point this out for non-surveyors. You may have noticed that as crew chief and prism man, Jay is the one who picks what to shoot in. So when he says you forgot what he meant was I forgot but I want to shift the blame onto you anyway. Jay, go back to the last point. We need to shoot that in. So off I go back to where I had just come from. I set up the instrument and get on the walkies. Me, hey Jay, I'm dialed in. Just need a backsight. Jay, you were just there. You don't need a backsight. Just shoot it in. Me, I can't shoot it in without a backsight. If I don't get the orientation, the rest of the job could be pivoted. Jay has all the swagger but I doubt he understood three whole words of what I had just said. He was crew chief on seniority, not an actual mind for the math. Basically, since I had broken it down, the instrument didn't know which direction it was facing. So it would pick a direction at random and just assume it was facing that way. Which means any points we shot in, including all traverses we shot from that point forward, would be pivoted around that point a random and arbitrary angle. Jay, you bleep shoot what I bleep and tell you to bleep shoot. Take the shots. So I shrugged. Technically, he was in charge. He was the one who literally called the shots. He was the one responsible. So I took the shots and we carried on, with me knowing everything was being increasingly transposed as we carried on. Cut to the end of our day. We had finished up pretty early compared to when we thought we would be getting out. The way we did things is we would shoot the points, then upload them to our company's server through a desktop with a mobile modem. 
This was exclusively my job because Jay was a monkey. He wouldn't know a file repository server map to a network drive from his asshole. So we pack up all the equipment, get in the truck, and I start uploading our points file. Jay likes to take off from the job site immediately. Even though he's supposed to wait for word from our techs confirming they got the points, but by a stroke of luck, he decided today he wanted to relax with a cigarette before we left. Usually he'd smoke as we drove but I guess he wanted to just chill. In any case, we're actually on the job site, not on the road. When he gets the call from home office, Jay answers the phone, expecting permission to duck off for the day. Hello, phone, makes muffled muttering sounds. Jay, what points? Phone, additional inaudible muttering. Jay, I don't understand. What's wrong with them? My ears perk. I know exactly what is wrong with the points. Through straining my hearing and knowing roughly what the tech is about to say, I can barely make out the following. Phone, mutter mutter. Control points, mutter mutter, over 400 yards. Now one might be wondering what control points are. Well, dear reader, I shall now edify thee with an explanation. You see, when surveying a large area, standard best practice is to do it in a large loop. You tell the data collector that point 1 is at position 1000. 1000, 0 and then collect the other points in relation to that arbitrary point. So when you circle around the area being surveyed you collect the position of that same first point again as your last shot so the techs know roughly what kind of error margin drifted in while you were traversing. And needless to say, when you're dealing with measurements with precision down to one thousandth of an inch, an error margin of 400 yards is completely unacceptable. Now what I could have done is asked Jay to let me talk to the tech, inform them that Jay refused to take a backside at one of the points, and tell them to take all points above point XXX, pivot them around point YYY by Z degrees, all numbers that I had memorized. That would have lined up the control points, compensated for the error completely, and we would have driven home having done a good job. But I couldn't do that, could I? That would have indicated Jay was wrong, and Jay is never wrong. So I held my tongue and tried not to smirk. Jay refuses to believe our points are wrong. OP must have uploaded them wrong. Bleeping idiot. Do it again and do it right this time. Of course it's my fault. It was always my fault in Jay's opinion. So I uploaded the points again and the tech informed him that the points are still off. Jay seizes the laptop. 20 minutes of the monkey stabbing at the keyboard ensues with him having to get the very patient tech to guide him step by step through the incredibly simple process of dragging and dropping the points file into his asshole. And again, the tech informs him the points are wrong. He is incensed. So minutes later we're piling out of the truck and grabbing all the equipment again so we can set back up on the point Jay ducked up on. With a back sight this time, go figure, and reshoot every single point in the back half of the job we just completed. I didn't mind. I was being paid to watch Jay curse and fume and beach me out with us both knowing I was the one who had warned him about the issue. Of course he keeps blaming me for the duck up, but I just take that as an occupational bonus. In the end, Jay got balled out by the big boss for wasting company time and money. My dad told me his check got docked for the screw up. Me, I got overtime. After all, Jay was the one responsible for the accuracy of the data. I was just the monkey pushing buttons on the instrument. Edit to address some themes in the comments. I don't care if you think I'm lying or not. I'm just here venting about my experiences with Jay. If you think it's fake because I don't perfectly remember every detail from 8 years ago. Good for you. I believe this sub has a rule to the effect of keep it to yourself. I can't confirm whether or not Jay actually got his pay docked. As I said in the post, my dad is the one who told me he got docked and it's possible he was just telling me that to make me feel better that Jay got his just desserts. If it's illegal, that's between Jay and the big boss. I just included it because it makes me smile to know Jay got reamed out for being a moron. Tell me not to come in if I don't comply, okay deal. This happened a long time ago at a company we'll call the company with a plant manager we'll call Richard. Richard was paid production bonuses and in his infinite wisdom. Greed. He told his superiors that we could get out more production than to plants our size could get out reasonably. With the aging equipment he refused to replace or repair. We were getting seriously behind and now needed to run 24, 7, just to stay as behind as we already were. A side note here, our handbook stated quite clearly that Sunday work was strictly voluntary and was to be requested by the supervisor by Thursday at lunch. Needless to say attendance on Sundays was abysmal at best since many of us had families and other important things in our life. Richard decided this wouldn't do and called a plant-wide meeting on one particular Thursday right before lunch. 
Richard, it has come to my attention that many of you are abusing. Yes, he actually said that. The Sunday voluntary workday status, so I am changing this effective immediately. He didn't have that authority. So if any of you choose not to come in on Sunday, don't bother coming back on Monday, understand? Me, are you serious? Richard, yes, me, awk with a crap eating grin. For clarification, we were working to shifts 12 hours each round the clock at this point, and apparently he had this meeting with them as well. Fallout, me and about three others got together and all decided to give him what he wanted. We didn't come in on Sunday or Monday. By Monday morning around 7 am my phone was blowing up with texts and missed calls. Finally I answered and it was Richard asking me where the hell are you? I politely said, enjoying my day off, thanks again. Richard yelled back what do you mean day off, you are supposed to be here. I said no, you told us that if we didn't come to work on Sunday not to come in on Monday, and frankly I thought that was very nice of you to give an extra day off like that. Richard realizing he's trapped changed tone slightly well, that's not what I meant and you know it, now get in here as soon as you can. I said nicely, nope, you can't back out now, next time say what you mean. Have a nice day, see you tomorrow. Then I hung up and turned off my phone. I had a great day playing games on PCs with my wife. Edit. I forgot to mention that after a few other incidents like this, the company finally fired Richard and now has a much better plant manager. It's a great place to work now. Edit 2. Wow, didn't expect an award on my first post here. Thank you. Rude lady caused her whole store to no longer get free tea. So for background, I worked at a high-end mall. Specifically, outrageously priced loose leaf tea. I met the owner of the business through my old basketball coach. She married an aspiring businessman who got rich because of his smart investments. Well one of these investments was this tea shop. This will be important later. We sold a variety of best quality loose leaf tea from around the world. Although it was mostly just retail, we also made drinks for about 5 to 8 dollars depending on the sizes of the cup. Part of our marketing is by going to other stores and offering them free tea. Since we had a lot of leftovers from the samples we used that day, towards the end of the day we'd transfer them in cups and give them out for free to neighboring stores. This gave us more customers and the employees are usually very grateful. Well, except this one rude lady. We'll call her Riel she worked at one of the big stores. She struts in one day and began to complain how her department never got the tea. She rambles on and on about how they always get it every Tuesday. She doesn't understand why it's so hard for us to be consistent. Riel, I know you guys always bring us tea, but we didn't get it today. Me, yeah. Those were just a courtesy from the owner. Riel, I know. So why didn't you bring us teas today? I don't understand why that's so hard to do. It's just tea. Me, mum, these teas are actually about $12 per two ounces. They're not cheap and we're not allowed to just give them out for free. Riel, well I know the owner. She always gives me free teas. I want to speak to the manager. You don't know anything. We pay for these teas at the end of the month and I don't see why you're breaking that contract. Shay was grasping at things at this point. Me, actually I am the manager. I know everything that happens with this store. We do not sign those type of contracts. We give out free tea as a courtesy. It's not mandatory. And from now on I think it's in our best interest to no longer give your store free tea. Riel realizes she ruined it for everyone you can't do that. I know the owner. My old coach actually was in the back at this time since her daughter usually goes to the classes slash events held at Microsoft. She slides the door open and walks out to look the rude lady in the eyes. Riel, finally. A grown up. Can you tell this kid to stop impersonating a manager and being so rude? Coach, actually that's my store manager. And I've never met you in my whole life. I think it's best for you to leave. I later on had to relay what happened to my other co-workers and they couldn't stop laughing. I guess me looking like a teenager doesn't make me look credible to be the manager. That was honestly one of the reasons why we stopped giving tea out for free. People got to demanding. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.